Yeah, hey guys, it's Tom Shepard. We're here at Elite FTS Compound, and today we're just going to be going over some really common mistakes that we see lifters doing with the overhead press. So we've got Naomi Shepard here as well, my wife and training partner. She's just finished her workout, but we're just going to be demonstrating some really common faults that are easy to fix with the military press that hopefully can help you get some more pounds on the bar. So if we just start with the start position. Now, what we really commonly see with a start position is people starting with the forearms and elbows angled back behind the bar. So if we just have Naomi demonstrate that, what we can see is that her elbows are way behind the wrist and she's got a line in forearm which is pointing out in front of the body, okay? Not only is this putting a load of stress on the shoulder, it's gonna massively limit how much weight you can actually support in this position, okay? So what we need to do from here, just rack it for me. What we need to do instead is start in a position where the elbow is actually pushed forward and together so that we can get the elbow and the forearm more under the bar, like that. So in this start position, what we're thinking is to push the elbows forward and squeeze in towards each other, okay? So that we can get a more vertical line here. And we've got a better bar path to go up and back over the head and more support because we're aligned directly under the bar then. Thank you, okay? So the reason a lot of people mess this up is because they think there's like an arbitrary place that the bar should start in an overhead press. When in reality, where the bar starts in a military press is gonna be determined by your limb proportions. So if you're very long through the forearm compared to the upper arm, when we're in this position, the bar is gonna be starting higher compared to if I'm long through here and short through here, it would be starting lower. So as opposed to trying to start with the bar in line with your collarbones or in line with your chin or your throat, whatever you think about, all you need to be thinking is the bar position that I start from is the position in which I can get a vertical forearm stacked under the bar. And if you can't do that, that's gonna be from shoulder rotation, some tightness around there. So that is something you need to work on. If you're really struggling with this, what you can do is just try a false grip. So instead, put your thumb over the bar rather than underneath. And now when we unrack, because the thumb isn't over the bar and the wrist doesn't have to be as rotated around it, we can scoop that elbow under the bar more and get in a more neutral position through here. Okay, thank you. Okay, so that's the most common fault that you see straight away. And that is usually paired with people starting back in a really cocked back wrist position. But the only reason that that's happening is because the elbow is behind the wrist. So the, you are subconsciously cocking your wrist back, subconsciously to try and get it back over that joint to support the load. Whereas if we are underneath, then we can get a more neutral position. And that thumbless grip just helps with that a little bit more. So the second most common fault that we see is in the actual finish position or overhead position, go ahead and press. We see an exaggerated lumbar arch here. Okay, so what happens is as the bar goes up, the ribs flare up, we get an exaggerated arch here and the butt sticks out more, okay? And this is usually followed by people saying that they don't like to do overhead press because it hurts their back. Now, what we're, get, what we're looking at here is the lats being too tight. So what happens is as we extend overhead, and the lat which attaches to the upper arm up here gets stretched because it can't pull the arm down because we're physically pressing up. Instead, what happens is the lower lat pulls up on the rib cage and that's what causes the ribs to flare up and then the back to arch. So it could be one of two things. It could be that you're not bracing properly and you're not using your abdominals to pull down on your rib cage and keep it stacked over your hip. Or it could simply be that your lats are tight so that you can't get to that position before they run out of range of motion and then something's got to give. So if it can't pull from this end, it pulls from this end instead. So if it's a, a mobility issue, very simply, you won't be able to stand and put your arm all the way into overhead extension. Whereas if it's a bracing issue, you'll be able to do that with no load. But then as soon as this starts to get more difficult, that's when we'll start to see it go. So what we'd like to see in the top position instead would be, here we go. As we press up, the ribs will stay down and the hip will stay directly underneath the rib cage here. And as a result of that, we've got a solid brace through here. Just arch up for me. As opposed to this, with the ribs up and the hips back underneath, okay? And rack it. Okay. So those are the two main faults that you see. Now, what often happens then is as you go through the set, that progressively deteriorates. And the most common thing you'll see is if, even if people start in a good position, they'll perform their first rep well, but they won't come down 
in the same manner that they press up. So as we press up, the bar path goes up and back over the head. And as a result, the elbows rotate so that they are pointing out to the side at the top of the lift, but they don't return back to that tucked position at the bottom. Okay, so what we end up seeing is a good start, a decent finish position, and then a flared position then as we come down because they don't know how to lower the bar under control and keeping the elbows flared out gives them a false sense of security being under the bar better. So what we want to see instead is as we lower the bar, the ribs stay down and we're looking to rotate the elbows inwards towards the rib cage the whole time that we are lowering the bar. So as if we're trying to snap the bar in and that will get the elbows tucking back in to that same position that we started in. Okay, so if Naomi can just demonstrate that. I want you to bring it down badly, the first one, if you like. So if we bring it down badly, the elbows are gonna stay wide and then we end up in a worse position than we started because we should be here. Whereas if we press up and now the focus is on rotating in, now, can you just do a couple more like that? Now we see that when we rotate this elbow in on the way down, we get back to that same start position that we had on the first rep and it's much more consistent. Beautiful, thank you. So those are three really common faults that are easy to fix, guys. I hope that was helpful. Until next time, I'll see you then.